Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests, a few weeks ago, I found out that I had a tiny little human being growing inside of my belly. Apparently, at 10 weeks, the fetus is about the size of a green olive, although I think mine is a bit of a large green olive. So I went to get my ultrasound a few days ago and measured at 3.3 centimeters, which is, I don't think, the size of a green olive. So I think my speech might have been more appropriately named a very large grape or, <laughs> or perhaps a, an olive on steroids or something. Uh, but regardless, the past few weeks have been a whirlwind of emotions for me. Excitement, nerves, definitely some fear, mostly excitement. And amidst all of these feelings, though, a recurring thought that I've had is this. That mainstream media does a really poor job in portraying the actual effects of pregnancy on women. Call me naive, but after digesting all of our typical books, and movies, TV shows, I expected something quite different from pregnancy. I walked around thinking about the pregnancy glow that people talked about. And I wasn't sure what this glow was, but I imagined some kind of like an aura, or maybe like a halo, or like an angel or something. And I don't know if you guys see it, but I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> and I pictured myself with a, this perfect little round belly that I could use as like a portable tray table or wherever I went to eat off of. <laughs> and I also heard people talk about this wonderful feeling of butterflies floating in your, in your stomach. Now, I don't know what these people have experienced, but for me, in my past 10 weeks, I have felt anything but these symptoms. And I would like to say that, if anything, I've experienced very unglamorous symptoms of pregnancy. And there are really an endless list of symptoms that I can share with you all, but the three that I'm going to share with you are worn sickness, a weird physical symptom called round ligament pain, and some strange but comical emotional symptoms. So morning sickness. Whoever came up with the term morning sickness is a really terrible person. Because <laughs> when you hear morning sickness, you think of sickness that occurs in the morning. <laughs> I would say, if anything, for me, I tend to feel my symptoms more so in the late afternoon to evenings. So maybe evening sickness? But it's not even that. It, sometimes I do wake up and I have morning sickness right from when I open my eyes. But that just means that the symptoms will pr progress throughout the day and it will be really bad by the time nighttime comes around. So if anything, I would say that this should be called all-day sickness, or 24-7 sickness. <laughs> the strange physical symptom I was talking about, round ligament pain. So probably about a week ago, I was lying down in bed, and I felt the need to sneeze. And when I sneezed, I had this sharp shooting pain go through my bladder. I'm a really paranoid person, so I immediately picked up my phone, and I googled, Sneezing, pain in bladder while pregnant. <laughs> and of course, a lot of different things come up. But the one reoccurring thing that I saw was something called round ligament pain. Now, if you've had a child before, or if your spouse has had a child before, you may have heard of this term before. But I can tell you that the general public, including myself, has never heard of this term before. I thought it was made up. I was like, what's round ligament pain? And it made sense when I looked it up. So if, if, if you can imagine this is the uterus and this is the bladder, there's a ligament in between the two that's connecting the two. And as your uterus is expanding, the ligament is also stretching, and so you're feeling that growing pain, essentially. So it makes sense. I'm not mad that I'm feeling this round ligament pain. That's totally normal. What I'm mad about is I was expecting to feel butterflies and magic. <laughs> and instead, it felt like someone was stabbing me in the bladder. And maybe my anger about these symptoms <coughs> come from some emotional symptoms. And as a graduate student, as a Marine, as a student mother-to-be, of course, I had absolute control of my emotions at all times. <laughs> or so I thought. <laughs> A few weeks ago, and this was pretty soon after I found out that I was pregnant, I was sitting on my couch and I was looking through my texts from about a year ago. My sister had her son exactly a year ago from my current due date, so she was going through all the same things that I'm going through currently right now, a year ago. And since mainstream media is not going to tell me about it, I decided to look at a reliable source, my sister, and see what kind of things she was going through a year ago. And I don't remember the exact context of the text, but I came across a really funny text, and I was sitting there laughing hysterically at these texts, and my husband was sitting in the room, uh, but on the other side of it, he was staring at me, and he was looking at me like, it was so funny. And I was laughing so hard that I actually couldn't get the words out of my mouth. And I started to cry while I was laughing. I'm sure this has happened to you all before. You laugh so hard that you cry. And then something really strange happened, which probably has never happened to any of you before. But as I was crying, my brain all of a sudden registered the tears on my face as tears of sadness. And before I knew it, I was sobbing and crying while I was looking at my sister's text. And so now imagine you're my husband. He came running over like, are you okay? 
And I was trying to explain to him, like, I'm not, I'm fine, I was actually laughing, and then I started crying, and now I'm sad, but I'm not really sad, I was just laughing. <laughs> and, uh, he just looked at me like I was absolutely crazy, and I felt like I was completely crazy. But I couldn't explain what was going on. The only thing that I could think of is that the, the green olive on steroids is not only living in this space down here, but perhaps has made its way up somewhere to my brain as well. Mm -hmm. And despite all of my complaints and my little vent session that I'm having with you all, I've, <laughs> I've actually come to find much gratitude in all these symptoms that I've felt because I've come to see that these are completely normal symptoms of pregnancy or most typical healthy pregnancies. And I still have a few weeks to go before I get past my first trimester, which is when women typically decide to share their news about pregnancy due to possible complications or whatnot within the first trimester. But as I was thinking about this, I figured that as I go through my pregnancy week by week, you all will be, in essence, somehow going through this pregnancy with me. So I thought maybe I should provide warning to you that you might be subject to my emotional ups and downs. So I'm, I'm glad to share this news with you. Thank you. Fellow Toastmasters, guests, and especially Viviana. First, let me say congratulations. What a wonderful way to bring the news to all of us. And it's very fun and unique and a great way to utilize Toastmasters. You, Viviana, you did your number two speech today, which was organize your speech. And the objectives that you were trying to meet was to select an appropriate outline, which allows listeners to easily follow and understand your speech. Make your message clear with supporting material. Use appropriate transitions and create a strong opening and conclusion. And that was a very strong opening. <laughs> you met all of these objectives very well. You have a very canorous voice, very comfortable and very conversational. That's always wonderful. It's only your second speech, but it's very wonderful and you're clear to listen to. One of your primary objectives was to organize your speech. Your main message was very clear that mainstream media does a poor job of portraying what pregnancy does to a woman and you supported that very well with a nice triad of things that were of your own personal experience, and that really pulled the speech together in, from an organizational standpoint. Uh, you asked me to look at your nervousness. So uh, one thing that you could work on in the future is, is to do that, and that's what you're here for, is to get a hold of that nervousness. Had you, had you not asked me to particularly focus on it, I don't know that I would have seen it that much because you are very comfortable up here. You, one thing I would say is to slow down and breathe a little bit more. And that will help a lot. And I just feel more relaxed doing that now. <laughs> <laughs> and your hands, your, you had abrupt hand movements. And, but one thing I noticed is you didn't use your notes at all. So here it's only your number two speech and you got away from your notes. And so now you can start to move a little bit more around the front area here because you're not tied to the lectern. And these are the things that you will be practicing in the next couple of speeches. So each of these next few speeches, you'll have a chance to focus on your body language and modul modulating your voice and moving around. And I have no doubt that you will be doing a, doing an excellent job of that. Again, you're very comfortable and natural speaker. I'm sure that you will be a wonderful mother, <laughs> and I look forward to your future speeches.